Ever since FNAF 3 released, there has been a huge debate which has sparked many theories, ideas, and tons of speculation throughout the FNAF community. With all that stemming from one simple question, why is Springtrap's jump scare so bad in FNAF 3? Now this might seem like a very simple question to answer, but in reality, it's actually one that has so many different potential answers that no one knows which one is actually true. So in this video, I'm going to talk about many popular theories and ideas speculating on what many fans think the true answer is, and I will also show you definitive proof of what the real answer is at the end of this video. So before I start talking about why Springtrap's jump scare is so bad in FNAF 3, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now as I said, there is many theories and ideas about this question, so I'm going to go over some of those first. Then afterwards, I'm going to use some evidence taken from said theories to finally solve this mystery once and for all. So the first and main theory I want to look at regarding this question is one of the most popular ones, and maybe one you've heard of before. And this theory suggests that the reason why Springtrap's jump scare sucks is because when Springtrap goes to attack the night guard, William Afton realizes that the guard is actually his son, Michael Afton. I mean, this theory has gotten so popular to the point that people have made tons of videos about it. You can literally find hundreds of videos online about this topic. And I mean, if you don't believe me, here are a couple right now. Michael! Don't leave me here! <laughs> Michael! Michael! Help! Wait, Michael, is that you? I can't believe it. What are you doing here? I thought you. Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! Michael, stop! Stop! Many people take this theory for fact, but what if I told you that this is actually not true, and the reason why might shock you. Now during FNAF 3's gameplay, we have to lure Springtrap throughout the building so that he doesn't reach our office and kills us. And the way we do that is by using audio lures so that we can attract Springtrap to different rooms and areas of the building. But as you do that, you have to avoid getting attacked from the phantom animatronics and also occasionally reset the ventilation and so on to stay alive. But sometimes if you fail to properly lure Springtrap to rooms far away from you, you might occasionally see him stand in front of you, or see him peeking through the doorway to the left of you. Now this brings me to my first issue regarding this theory. Springtrap can clearly see you, as he is looking directly at you. So if you realize that you are Michael, then why does he still attack you? Why wouldn't he just walk away after seeing you, or try to approach you without scaring slash killing you? Sure, I guess you can say that maybe his eyesight is very bad, hence why he continues to move forward towards you. But even then, we can see Springtrap walk past your monitor, and he stares directly at you as he does that. Which at this point, he's literally less than a foot away from you, so unless he was blind, then why does he still attack? Well personally, I don't think this is why his jump scare sucks, but many FNAF fans do think this is why it does. But unless I'm missing something, then I just don't see how this makes any sense. Also, let's remember, Michael Afton didn't exist yet when FNAF 3 came out. But now since we debunked the main and most popular theory regarding this question, let's take a look at some other way better theories that have more weight and believability to them. Another theory I haven't heard much about, or really even heard talked about, mentions that the reason why Springtrap's jump scare is so slow is because William Afton is actually toying with you and sort of playing with his prey before killing it. The theory suggests that everything he does in the game is calculated, from him peeking at you through the office window, walking past your monitor, and so on. Unlike the majority of animatronics seen in the FNAF games, Springtrap doesn't mindlessly walk around the building until he finds you. No, he immediately heads towards your office. He stalks you throughout the nights and acts more as a stalker compared to any animatronic seen through the franchise. So when he attacks you, it's not super crazy. He simply just kills you quickly and that's it. There isn't really much else to say about this theory, but I certainly believe believe it more than the last one. But if you don't think that theory is any good, then the next theory will definitely change your mind. Now during Springtrap's jump scare, we can clearly see that he moves slowly, hence why people think it's so bad. But there's actually a surprising reason that he does this, that gets overshadowed because of the Mike theory. Using common sense and looking at the lore, William Afton has been springlocked for 30 years, where he has been sitting and decaying in said suit. And during the game, we can see his decayed, almost mummified body in the suit. Now let me give you a little anatomy lesson. Do you know what rigor mortis is? Well, rigor mortis is a change in the chemicals in the body after death, which results in the stiffening of the body muscles. So technically, it means the body is hard to move around due to it being so stiff, making the limbs less flexible and mobile compared to an alive person. Now with that out of the way, we can very much so attribute this to William Afton. After 30 years of being dead and practically being a zombie, we can just assume that this is the reason why he is so slow during his jump scare. Even in FNAF Help 1, we see him limping and moving around like he is in extreme pain, with probably the main reason of this being because of how decayed he is and because of the rigor mortis. But there is still still more to this theory that is even more shocking than that, so make sure to subscribe if you are enjoying the video and if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now you might be thinking that what I just said solved the question, which I would agree with, but there is still more evidence that further backs up this theory even more. During the FNAF 3 phone calls, we can hear Phone Guy talking about the spring Bonnie suit and how it has two different modes, animatronic mode and suit mode. Uh, 
provide you with much needed information on how to handle slash climb into slash climb out of mascot costumes. Right now we have two specially designed suits that double as both animatronic and suit. So please pay close attention while learning how to operate these suits as accidents slash injuries slash death slash irreparable and grotesque maiming can occur. First, we'll discuss how to operate the mascots when they are in animatronic form. For ease of operation, the animatronics are set to turn and walk towards sound ease. This is an easy and hands-free approach to making sure the animatronics stay where the children are for maximum entertainment slash crowd pleasing value. To change the animatronics to suit mode, insert and turn firmly the hand crank provided by the manufacturer. Turning the crank will recoil and compress the animatronic parts around the sides of the suit, providing room to climb inside. Now as we know, when William got springlocked, that's because the suit's springlock mechanism failed on him, causing the suit to crush him to death. But personally, I also believe that when the springlock suit failed, it caused it to go back into animatronic mode since it was no longer able to function as a suit. So I believe this also correlates on why Springtrap is lured to the sound of Balloon Boy's voice. In FNAF 2, Phone Guy mentions that the animatronics were programmed to find where the people are at so they can perform for them. The robots were never given a proper night mode, so when it gets quiet, they think they're in the wrong room. So then they go try to find where the people are, and in this case, that's your office. And even Foxy was also programmed to attend birthday parties, so it wouldn't surprise me if the spring bonnie suit had the same features. This makes me believe that it's actually not William Athen going towards the sound of Balloon Boy's voice, but instead the suit. Now why do I bring all this up? Well because this all leads back in the more evidence I have for this theory. Since William Athen has been dead for 30 years, he is obviously weak, plus with him being stuck in the suit, I bet he has little to almost no control of the suit. So I believe that he actually can't really control where he goes, since the suit has a mind of its own. So I also believe that with these two things in mind, we can assume that Springtrap has to fight his way to get to your office. And when he finally reaches it and goes to jump scare the player, the fact he can barely move doesn't help with his mobility during the jump scare, making it look so bad. Now personally, that's my theory on why his jump scare is so bad, and I think lore wise it fits. And also from a gameplay standard, it makes sense as well. But there is still one more thing to talk about with his jump scare that I never see anyone mention either. And well, it's probably the true answer to this question that you've all been waiting for. Now just hear me out, maybe the reason Springtrap's jump scare is so bad is because Scott made it that way, whether it be on purpose or accidentally. Maybe when Scott was developing FNAF 3, Scott had no lore intention behind Springtrap's jump scare, so when FNAF fans began complaining about how weak it was, they began to theorize on why it was so bad to make themselves feel better about it, and to actually make his jump scare make sense. Which guess what, that probably wasn't the case at all. Even though I'd like to believe the last theory I just talked about, let's be real here, this is probably the true answer. Hell, so many FNAF fans complained about this, Scott ended up making FNAF 4 because of it to try and compensate for the bad jump scare. I'm serious, look it up, like that is literally real, that's why FNAF 4 was made. Personally, I don't think Springtrap's jump scare is that bad, I like both versions fairly well, but I understand the hate. But I think we should shift the focus onto the FNAF Ultimate Custom Night version of his jump scare, because personally I think that is a thousand times worse than the FNAF 3 version. At least in FNAF 3, his jump scare is unique because of how slow it is, but in FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, it's literally him just flying around until the game over screen appears. It just takes away from his character so much, because at least we can use the theories we talked about to make sense of why his jump scare is so slow, but in FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, it takes away all logic and personality Springtrap had and throws it out the window. I don't know, personally, that's just my opinion, but oh well. Now obviously, I'm sure there might be things I am missing. I always tend to miss or overlook pieces of evidence on accident, so I'm sure there's probably more information that can prove my points even more, or maybe even disprove it. But do you guys agree with my theories? Make sure to comment down below if you have any theories of your own, and if you enjoyed this video, you will definitely enjoy one of these videos on screen right now.